Hanging out with Baba Jide Kolade Otitoju. BKO, I greet you, Jide. Uh, Jide, we are joined by the delectable Prakot girl, yes. uh, Ibn Abo Dixie. Ah, I greet you, Ibn Abo. Good evening, citizen. Good evening, okay. Baba Jide. All right, so the team is ready. I hope you are. The Greek philosopher Plato captured it all. He said, be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. Uh, let's share this story with you. That was the mood when parents and guardians received the credit alert of EduCash program of Governor Dakwa Biodo in Ogo State. The financial support is expected to capture 100,000 students in primary and secondary schools in Ogo State in order to speak in during the tour of different schools to ensure that parents of students who benefited from the program receive the credit alert as promised. The Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology in Ogo State, Abayomi Arigbabu, said students of Ogo State origin across tertiary institutions in the country receive the support of 50,000 Naira each. Through the education sector, we are giving out 50,000 Naira to all Ogun State indigenous. Now, for primary and secondary school learners, um, these are young children. I mean, they, they don't have accounts and so on, and we don't want to give cash to anybody. We instructed the, the principals to get the teachers in each of the schools to identify the indigent learners. So the one for primary and secondary is for indigent learners. So to identify the indigent learners in their school, and then invite their parents, uh, to get the account details, and then the money will be transferred directly to the parents. He added that 850,000 students in primary and secondary schools in the state will get free exercise books to complement the free education program of the state government. The governor has decided to give exercise books to all learners in Ogun State, that is primary and secondary school. That is a total of 850,000 uh, learners. The parents and students could not hide their joy as they express appreciation to the governor. We really appreciate our governor. We thank him for what he has done for us. I hear in respect of uh, governor's promise that is going to help us at uh, this time of uh, economic hardship. I just feel that I will be able to use it to do something good, be able to buy a textbook, and I'm going to say thank you to our state governor. Parents and students who benefited from Governor Dakwa Biodun's EduCash program are appreciative of his gesture. They say the governor promised to support them with money, and of course, he fulfilled his promise. They say this is the first of its kind in the state. Kazim Olowe, TVC News, Abe Okuta. Yeah, Yide, I rather like the, uh, the involvement of the parents. You know, sending the money to the parents for me is... Uh, uh, we'll do the trick. That's the, that's the best they could have done because a lot of those, um, those children, they mm -hmm. don't have a bank account of their yeah. own. Yeah. They are too young to run bank accounts. And if, even uh, when parents open accounts um, for their children, mm. those children cannot operate those accounts by themselves because yeah. Uh, because of age uh, yeah. and all that, they are not old enough and not um, permitted by law to operate bank accounts. So but the gesture? The gesture is fantastic and um, there was no way the government, because I asked people asking the question, how did they determine the indigent students and all that. There was no way the government could have determined the indigent students without the buying of the teachers. They have mm. to get the teachers to identify the man. We can only hope that the teachers will be objective, mm. you know, in um, identifying those indigent students. But there's no, uh, you know, we don't have proper records here. Ordinarily, mm. for all of these interventions, there ought to be a record of those who are indigent, those who had benefited in the past and all that, you have the demographics that will enable you to reach all of the uh, people that need this kind of intervention the most. But 
Um, we don't have that culture of mm. keeping records and, uh, and all that. So I'm pleased that at least we criticize these governors and we are beginning to see signs that they mean uh, what they promise to do. So, so, so if, if, if we criticize them and they become born again, we should also... Should also That's why we are doing it. <laughs> and we we'll continue to tell the government of Kwabiodun that look, there's still a lot of work to do. We don't, yeah. Yes, so you started well. You have to sustain end, the moment. End well. Yes, it's, it's a good thing to see you attempting to assuage the pains of our people is, mm -hmm. is what we, we expected to see. Now we are beginning to see it, and pictures don't lie. You can see even someone who is not from Ogun State, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, uh, someone clearly from the Southeast uh, is benefiting yeah. from it. So uh, we, we had the man speak. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a good kudos to uh, Prince Akwabiodo for doing this, and yeah. we also expect what the president said about uh, cash awards, that they should continue the cash awards to workers until a mu new minimum wage kicks in. Yeah. We also uh, expect him. He saw the telephone. They, they, they yes, they are showing their uh, bank yeah. balance, you know, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, after, after receiving their alerts and all that. So it's, um, it's not audio uh, alert. Of At course. least uh, people can see. That the you, 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 said you can it see all. the way they were singing. You just don't tell like. They don't tell like. Look at the songs they were singing. Yeah. Look, look at that. Uh, Gomino, da, da, and Gomino, uh, yeah. no, yeah. no, and all that. So it's not difficult, citizen, to, to, to please Nigerians. Yeah. Our they, people they are standards. not people to be pleased. Yes, our people. You do one kilometer of road, they will sing your praises. Mm. It's just a shame that government you know, at all levels, find it difficult to consistently go along that path, uh, along that path of making our people happy, of working wholeheartedly for our people. Mm. I mean, and our people, and it, you can see they, it, they are happy. Because it is said government exists for the benefit of the people, and yes. not the other way. Yes, not for their own benefit, yeah. or the benefit of their children. Yeah. It's for the benefit of the totality of the people. Even, even also, it's like taking the message further afield. Uh, be kind to everybody. You don't know who, who's, everybody is fighting a, a battle, a peculiar battle. Exactly. Mm. I, I also want to add my voice to that of Obadji that um, well done to Governor Adakwabiodu. And I also heard that he's working on um, providing markets, yeah. markets and uh, places. I don't know how they're going to go about it. Are they going to go about it like it was done in Lagos where they have food hubs? Or are they going to collaborate with already, you know, established marketplaces? But they're going to be bringing food items to these marketplaces at, and you know, certain days mm -hmm. of the week. And these food items will be sold at very rock bottom price, which is very encouraging. Yeah. And also, um, here's a reminder, because I heard, um, I think it was um, early this year, uh, the governor is working on introducing this uh, CNG buses to okay. ply um, away Gajar, Axis. Mm. So all of these things are, you know, being put together to alleviate this um, economic hardship. Essentially, hardship. as Jide said, it can be done. Uh, it can be done. It can be done. It doesn't take too much to please Nigerians. Mm. That is, maybe that is even the reason for some of our leaders taking advantage of Nigerians. Yes. A little thing, they are so excited. Mm, yeah. So why deny them? So I, 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 we commend him, I commend him a lot, and I hope that um, he continues. You know, the other time he, 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 we talked about him uh, providing uh, and primary health care uh, for that's, pregnant women. And, it, yeah. Yes. Mm. So we hope that all of these things are... And as, as we say, Governor Dakwa Abiyadu, we wish you Godspeed, though. Mm. Yes. Sustain the tempo. Mm -hmm. All right, then, to our next story. You know, successful rice production depends on getting adequate input to enhance yields, especially in very critical times like this. In a bid to ensure food security, the NDDC, an interventionist agency of government, has partnered, has partnered with the Rice Farmers Association of Nigeria. Uh, we can tell you that the NDDC director of corporate affairs 
Pius Wahab Muteni, I hope I got that right, informed that NDDC MD Dr. Samuel Ugbuku met with the rice farmers in Port Harcourt River State. Now, with the smart agriculture approach, self-sufficiency in rice production is assured. Uh, you've been about your state is in the news. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> and, um, yeah, forming an alliance with rice farmers is a very smart move. Mm. And um, it should be sustained. And also, you know, it's, it's, a, it's um, an economic... Uh, they are, Boom. Yes, and they are diverting from this mono economy on oil and oil and oil. And of course, with the obvious bio biological factors, the Niger Delta area is a good place to cultivate rice. Yeah. And they already have um, rice mills, and they have one in Port Harcourt, they have one in Aquaibom. And I think they should acquire more. And it's a, it's a good move so that we can and be, be self-sufficient in There food are many production. varieties of rice in Nigeria. It gives you hope. Yes. If we can tap into it. We should. Yeah. We should. And it shouldn't just end with, um, I know that Lagos State had uh, collaborated with um, Niger State. Other states, what can your state, what can your state produce abundantly? Mm. Collaborate with other states so that we can be self-sufficient in the area of food production. Yeah. The land is green. We, the land is vast. Ourselves. We can and even we can. we can feed ourselves and have excess yeah. to exports. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Not it's, necessarily getting some unscrupulous Nigerians uh, ferrying food items as we discussed yesterday. It's unfortunate. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Did it, it, it can only get better. Yes, and I'm happy that um, the NDDC as um, an interventionist agency is looking in different directions to um, actualize its mandate. and. His mandate is not simply to construct roads, mm. you know, mm. uh, or to desilt uh, rivers um, in the Niger Delta area. It also has to show more than a person interest in food production. Mm. It, the season that we are now has made it clear to us that food production must be our priority. Mm we have a situation in which the, the Lagos governor confessed to me during the um, media okay the uh, chat media the party other with him yeah in their chat that they have a rice mill here the biggest in West Africa but they don't have paddies and without rice paddy you can't keep the mill working yeah. And you need paddy in ample quantity, not just um, uh, a few trailers here and there. Mm. The sort of quantity that um, matches maybe two vessels, for example, mm. two vessels filled with rice paddy. Now Lagos is looking for where to get paddy here and there. It's difficult at this time because state governors local governments, federal agencies are also are looking for rice to distribute to people. So the farmers are already, <coughs> they are overworked trying to produce paddy. <coughs> so at this time, Sorry. there is nowhere to go. It's already thinking maybe government can allow Lagos to import, and it's not yeah. going to be easy. Yeah. <coughs> Because if, Sorry, if you are allowed to import, if you are allowed to import, it can hurt <coughs> domestic rice mills. Yeah. So we just have to continue to produce. And as Ibinabo said, uh, uh, the Niger Delta uh, area is, is tailor made for rice production. Mm all the ecological factors that um, encourage rice production so, are so present. That's it, that's it. Sufficient water, sufficient rainfall. You can produce rice two times in a year. In a year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Harvest rice two times in the year within the Niger Delta area. Mm. The Niger Delta area can produce more than 
half of the entire rice needs of Nigeria. Mm. It's just the zeal has to be there. In Kirby State, Kirby is Nigeria's biggest rice grower. They produce, on the average, 2.5 million mm. tons, mm. metric tons, metric I mean, tons. Mm. metric tons of rice in, in wet season. Mm. They are able to produce 1.5 metric tons of rice in dry season. So you can imagine the opportunities that are there. And in uh, Baesa, for example, they produce palm fruit in ample quantity. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They could focus on that mm. because you see miles and miles as far as the eyes can see of palm, palm trees, palm trees yeah. just like in a quite bomb too in your state. Mm. Mm. So they, we just have to continue to work harder, producing a lot more. If countries like China, like India, like Malaysia, with Singapore. big populations, yeah. Can feed Indonesia, themselves. yeah. We don't have an excuse. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, even about, you know, let's talk about varieties. <coughs> you know, if you go to, to parties now, uh, you are served the conventional rice uh, types. Mm. The moment Ofada comes into the picture, <coughs> it, you, the mood changes. Mm. So it tells you there's a little something about our rice type. There is, there is. There is. Even, you know, we, I don't know which state that comes from, but we have a kind of rice that you can make into what we call swallow. You can turn it, okay. you know, and, you know, turn it, it into like a, a cereal. A cereal, yeah. A cereal, and then you, you, you eat it with soup and all of that. A, we a, have a, a boy, for instance. I, maybe, a, may, I'm, I'm not quite sure of the state. Like mm. So um, my excitement is that this transition away from this oil economy. Mm. That is a, that is the mm. key thing for me because this, you know, reliance on oil, 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 as if uh, there is nothing else Nigeria can do. Ponchon, you know, for imported rice exactly. should, should cease. Yes. And some of this imported rice, from what we heard, some of them probably have stayed so long wherever they kept them in their warehouses and all of that. Mm. So sometimes what you tell yourself, ideas? what are you actually consuming? Mm. The ones produced in Nigeria. They are more mm. nutritious. They are more nutritious. Because yeah. mm. they are not polished. They are more nutritious. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm excited and I hope that we are going to sustain this. Okay. Uh, NDDC, we wish you well. To our next story, make no mistake about it. The challenge of modernity is to live without illusions. Minister of the Federal Capital Territory... <coughs> FCT, the irrepressible barrister Yesha Mwike cannot imagine that in a 21st century Nigeria, the police and Department of State Services, the DSS, do not have tracking equipment for tackling crime and criminals. To boot, the minister had to lend the equipment for use at the headquarters of the police and the DSS. Wiki said he int intimated the president with the anomaly it can only get better. But the story is here. Let's share it with you. After that, the news of South and Peck has come. Um, we are willing to give it to them so that they are able to bring in investors who want to establish the other source of technology as a technology hub. For me, it's not about you being a child. It's about the capacity. It's about contributions. Go there, nothing. Nothing. And you answer the head of the visual technology village. That doesn't make sense to me. Government cannot put the money government should put and put by providing the, the road the infrastructure. So, I think the Minister of Science and Technology is doing quite well, and I can assure you in the next few months uh, people will begin to come in. It's mm. an amazing place. Mm. I'm a member of the People's Democratic Party. Have you ever seen me change any day? Uh, 
PD, did you hear that? Hmm? Yeah, he, he's still a PDP member. Yes. He, 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 he only took a break. Mm, he has not officially left the party, and uh, they've not found the courage to expel him. Mm, so he's still uh, he's still there, he's still there, um, flexing his muscles, <laughs> and um, he's controlling the structures of the party in the state, and has found a way to also bring his. Uh, elements loyal to him to control the structures of the APC in the same states. Mm. So one individual <laughs> holding on to <laughs> multiple structures of political parties. But uh, let's leave Wiki and talk yeah. about the elephant in the room. We expect the police to perform miracles. But we refuse to Give them, Give them the, the equipment that we need. Yeah. We have the National Assembly Committee on Police Affairs. They come up with budget every year. Why have they prioritized their a budget for their community projects over the uh, security of our nation? I mean, it's, 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 it's inconceivable that people will be reasoning like this. Do you know, because the, the, the story is shocking in itself. That's, that's why it's shocking. You, you admit that, okay, as principal officer, this is what you get hmm. for pro, uh, constituency projects. Whether the money goes directly to your pocket or not, it's going to your constituency for projects in your constituency. When people see those projects, they are likely to let you come back. But if you are thinking about the greatest joy of the greatest number, yeah. that's utilitarianism, the principle of utilitarianism, then you should be thinking about equipping the police to the point that they can deal with these criminal elements harassing us. Do you know how many meetings we've had in Abuja over the fact that there is a spike in criminal activities in the federal capital? One of the aides of one of the uh, senators, Senator Ned Nwoko, was killed after he was kidnapped. So why wouldn't they say, OK, this tracker that is talking about, the IG's response team, the one that uh, Abakiari used to head, yeah. they have it. And that's why you see that Abakiari was very successful because he was able to use those tools. He will locate you. He will locate the criminals and bring them to justice. In real time? Yes. Well, it may not be immediately. You know, they are also constantly moving. Okay. You know, so they don't stay in one place, but in the fullness of time, he gets them. Mm. So that equipment, if we are a serious country, that equipment should be in all police formations, formations in across, our country. Across the country. Or all uh, state police headquarters. Are you suggesting like that's a metaphor for what's going on? at the moment. What is I'm trying to say, what I'm saying is, it shouldn't be something that, okay, maybe just RRS has it, or um, the uh, IG's response team. No. It shouldn't be the, the tactical teams of the police alone. I'm saying that every police headquarters, state headquarters, should have such a thing. Do you know what they do? When there is a big crime like that and there is pressure on them, they will now write to the IG and say, please, um, uh, mandate your intelligence response team to help us locate these criminals. They will now begin to use those tools. So why should the commissioner of police in Lagos have to write to Abuja, for example, that ah, some criminals they, they carried out uh, one raid here. We need to get them because the IRT has the tools. 
the trackers. Can you please mobilize them to start work? It is not a sensible thing to do. You've got to replicate it across the police uh, divisions, uh, the uh, police headquarters, state headquarters. At right. least you start from there. You can now move to divisional headquarters. That is how we can have a police that is uh, technologically a truly, driven. A, a truly mobile police. Yes, a police that is nimble technologically, mm -hmm. and that's, that police will achieve results. When they yeah. talk about America offering to help us in locating this boy, it's not as if American troops will come down here. They are not going to put boots on mm -hmm. the ground. They are going to provide Technology. equipment mm -hmm. that you need. So we, we've, not, we've not really started this war. Honestly, if we want to defeat crime, I like we came for one thing, he will speak his mind. Are you saying that the former FCT minister did not know that this problem was there? Mm -hmm. he, he did not know. Abi? Mm -hmm. He just chose not to do anything about it. So Anything goes. It, it, now we are, we are faced with a very big problem of insecurity, especially in northern Nigeria. We don't have the tools. We don't have the tools. Let's not, keep, let's not just be blaming police. They are paying with their lives every day. Yeah. But you've not given them the tools that they need. You do not motivate them enough. That's uh, the evidence. Yeah. Even about, you know, that we're playing catch up in a 21st century world where <clears throat> almost everybody is going E, you know. Sophistry is taking over where we're playing catch up. It's a shame. It's a shame, and uh, like Baba Gita said, it's a good thing that... Um, so, sometimes you wonder if these stories are true. But they are. It's our reality. They are true. You know, you know, sometimes I've asked myself, Sarayda, how could this criminal element have such audacity, such temerity? But because they know mm. that our police cannot match them hardware to hardware. Yeah. They don't have the equipment. And we're talking about equipment. So imagine a case where equipment were not, you know, were, are, are becoming inadequate. Now, well, let's talk about their emotional quotient. Mm. Because it takes a man who is in his right senses, a man who is thinking right, to face a criminal. So what, what, I don't want to begin to imagine what that area is for the police. The area of their remuneration, their salaries, and how they are taking, they are being taken care of and all of that. This would clearly affect your emotional cushion. You, you transfer a man from Sokoto to say Calabar. Mm. You, you are not thinking how do we <coughs> make it's him comfortable? It's, 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 it's very sad. It's sad. Right. It's sad. Okay, we, we'll take a breather here. We'll go for a commercial break. Please, we'll be back. Stay with us. Thank you. day on Business Nigeria, we uncover the secrets of the financial world. Breaking down intricate economic and financial matters. We analyze the stock market, shares, bonds, and the thrilling world of cryptocurrencies. We unveil and analyze complex policies of the CDN and other governments parasit out as they affect your everyday life, keeping you a step ahead every time. Okay, okay. This is the anyway. Fact matter. Our team dives deep to separate facts from popular opinion. We simplify complex government policies as it impacts your everyday life, helping you navigate the ever-changing financial landscape. Watch Business Nigeria every weekday at 2 p.m. Only on TVC News. First, with breaking news. Okay, welcome back. Uh, you're still on the subject of uh, <coughs> uh, the FCT minister. He says you expect the DSS and the police to work wonders, but they don't have the tools. They don't. They don't have the tools. Are they going to go there with ding guns? Are they going to go there with what? You know, you know, I begin to ask myself, okay, what is the essence of, because when you have not even provided them with tracking device, what is the essence of all of these um, propaganda about 
um, same connection to link into this and that mm. so that you can track down criminals and all of that. When you don't, they don't even have the devices to carry out this job. All right. It's sad. Uh, the, the good thing is that uh, we wasted money on that. It's, 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 but we are not seeing the, the result. The result is it, it's not then, there. Then, um, I that, know that. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Because these guys are still able to use their phones to negotiate for ransom. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, in any serious country, kidnappers should, should not have the capacity to pick their phones and be using their phones to negotiate. They should get them immediately. Well, that's why I said, it's like we've not really begun uh, this war against this guy. When we are ready to defeat them, mm. we'll defeat them by force because they are not bigger than the state. Clearly what I see from the armed forces and our government is a lack of will. strong will yeah. to deal decisively with these people. We have to forget about some of these uh, arguments, the LAME argument that we are doing. Mm. A criminal is a criminal, no matter where he comes By all means. No mm. You can't tell me that you don't know their hideout. You know their hideout. You know. Some of us uh, know where they are, where, where they are the, hideouts the, are. The, because the, I've interviewed bandits before. The, we know where they are, we know where their hideouts the, are. Remember the last but one no, we've not gone Cardona, there. Cardona State said, <coughs> they hear them speak talk, which is saying if we want to really get smoke them out, we can. We can. Be, be nothing short of a full-scale war against those boys who suffice at this time. But I, when I, are we going to call the bluff? Yes. Um, roll out the tanks for them. I saw a video in which an army mine resistant an ambush protected vehicle hmm. was set ablaze. Do you know? Do you know how much that vehicle is? Even like two years ago, one of those vehicles was about four hundred million naira. That's what the idiots set ablaze. And I'm like, what's going on? Do they do they even know the value of the equipment that they set ablaze? <sighs> and, and we are just. All right, uh, GD, let's go to our, our last story. You know, after what can be likened to beating a dead horse in the fight against the menace of kidnapping, northern governors are meeting with the National Security Advisor, the NSA, mm. to explore and exploit new options. It's a kinetic and non-kinetic options, that is to say, think out of the box and they have new methods in tackling the menace of kidnapping in this region. Governor of Gombe and chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, Inua Yaya, made the <coughs> disclosure after a meeting at Abuja on Thursday. Well, my trouble here is going public with the move. But first, let's share this story with you. It's a race against time for the authorities who are on their toes to secure the release of victims, especially students recently kidnapped in Kaduna and Sokoto states. The meeting of the Northern State Governors with the security chiefs and the National Security Advisor is meant to determine the best way to handle the issue. After a more than three hour meeting behind closed doors, the Governor of Gombe State spoke on resolutions reached. Security is very topical, especially uh, with the recent issues of kidnapping in the Northwest. And we are becoming so concerned that we need to discuss, review, and possibly take alternative options to what we have been doing before so that we can have a better result. And already the service teams and all other security agencies have been doing their best in trying to cover up. So what we need to do is to change style, especially adding with a non-kinetic approach so that at the end of it, when we join the two, we'll have a better security situation in the country. The speed of kidnapping in the northern part of the country has got into a frightening dimension. British authorities describe it as reprisals for recent onslaught on terror campaigns. But President Tinubu's directive for the rescue of kidnapped victims remains clear, just as the military authorities step up action for the operation. For now, Nigerians wait with bated breath in anticipation of results.
Siphon ACN TVC News. Yeah, uh, Ibenabo. So, uh, Brack, we're going to the Brack stacks. Uh, you know, a lot of times we like to use some kind of English in Nigeria <laughs> <laughs> to define things that are already on ground. Yeah. Non kinetic, kinetic. Is why people say, give, I mean, let me put it in pigeon, give picking breast, give breast to picking. I make picking chop in your That's all. What yes. we're talking about is provide security. Let me take us to the schools. And so now they said, I'm going to do more yay to low me. You understand that now? Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, 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 okay, okay, let's go to the schools. Most of these schools do not have perimeter fence. <laughs> so it is very not, easy. Not less of security. <clears throat> you understand? So it is very easy for kidnappers to just stroll into these schools. Yes. And do whatever they want to do and stroll back to wherever they came from. So as they have held their meetings, they should as well begin to look at all of these schools. Make sure that every school has perimeter fencing. Don't leave any school vulnerable to kidnappers or abductors. Because in one of the stories that I read, I, I think it was the one in um, where 15 students were kidnapped. Mm. They were just, the, these criminal elements were just, they had gone to perform their evil enterprise somewhere and they were going. Then they saw people running and yeah, they saw these so students good. running mm. back to their school, mm. to their hostel. But if that place had some sort of fence to secure that environment. <coughs> they can't just easily... An alarm could have been... Exactly. Right. They wouldn't even find it so easy. How do, how do you go to a place and you're able to kidnap over 200? 200 children. It's, 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 it's shameful. They should start from and, there, please. And the thing couldn't have happened in 30 minutes. They were taking enough time. I'm, I'm sure they took their time because they knew that nothing did happen. We have to begin to... Take the bull by the horn, and you know all this grammar does not help. I don't, it, I don't see the. Uh, it doesn't help. I don't even see what they plan to do. That is new. It's new. There's nothing new. Nigerians need ah. assurances that the people we voted into office will protect us. Are working. We need firm assurances from our leaders that this problem of insecurity will be dealt with decisively. What we keep getting uh, assurances that are neither here nor there. There is no reason in the world for any school located in dangerous areas to still be running, especially in that northwest. Because if that had been the case, this would not have happened. Mm. Mm. 287 children. The whole world is talking about Nigeria. We put our country to shame over our inability to protect our children. We've let down the children. We've let down their parents. We want more and more children to go to school, to acquire education. Education is what makes a country great. Mm. Because the ideas that make our world better are products of good education. That's it. That's it. But now, people can't go to school. They go to school fearing that they could be kidnapped. A child that witnesses that and manages to escape kidnap, <laughs> do you think he will go back to school? Yeah. Especially in an educationally disadvantaged yeah. area. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So the Northern governors need to sit together. They need to do a meeting and tell themselves the truth. This is the way to approach this war. Because we are at war, just as the president's wife said. We are at war. We have to admit it. We are at war. Mm. Against these non-state uh, actors, we are at war. That is the fact. We have to admit it. Non-kinetic, kinetic approach, just give, let us know that you want to go the whole hog. I'm not interested in this grammar. 
impotent grammar that does not achieve any result. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I've, I've listened, the, the other day the NSA tried to prove to us that security has improved. And shortly after, he reeled out some statistics that uh, suggested uh, that security had improved. These boys escalated their, their attacks. Now, can he face his countrymen and women and say the same thing? Mm -hmm. Where we, we make gains, we have to consolidate on the gains that we made. Yeah. Yeah. We can't have a situation in which people will find it so easy to pack our children. In numbers, in large numbers. It's an embarrassment. It's a national embarrassment. And that area, you see, where we don't take development to the deepest part of our country. Mm. This is what we see. Exactly. That area where they kidnapped those uh, 287 children, the next military base to that community is 35 minutes drive. Right. Yeah. No network. These are so how do you even raise an alarm? And come to think how of do you raise an alarm? Come to think of it. That's why that school should not have even opened. Because on the way to Beningwari, we all know how dangerous Beningwari is. Is mm -hmm. the is the is the is the northern capital of banditry. And Boko Haram as well, because some elements of Boko Haram are operating there. They kill soldiers. It's not it's not a new thing. You know, mine is this when the outside world will read these unprintable things about Nigeria. You expect the investors to come? They will not readily come. Every time the Americans come up with um, their travel advisory, the only geopolitical zone in our country that they live out is the south Southwest. Mm. Go back and check all of those travel advisories that they do, because the Southwest is the safest part of our country. People can rave about Lagos, oh, they rob in traffic. How many times does it happen? The people talk about these things because they don't want to give credit to security managers in Lagos. I wish they can swap places with some of the states of the Northwest, hmm. where you suddenly hear about that about 30 people were kidnapped at once. They go into a community, pack more than 50 people. They shoot into mosque. How many times have we seen that happen in Lagos? Moscow. When people are fasting, mm. you go and open fire on them. Very it's true. happening in the Northwest. Not only leaders need to sit down and figure out how they can solve this problem. You have military bases, military formations in Kaduna especially. Yet, look at the problem that we are facing. So what is the essence of having all of those military bases? It's meaningless if they cannot defend their people. They should begin to develop their states. <clears throat> they should go to the boundaries, these extremities. Because if you look at Lagos, the government of Lagos is taking development to every nook and cranny of Lagos. Yeah. So, so anywhere you are in Lagos, you feel you are somewhere in the city center. You don't have this feel of, I mean, a village. I'm in the bush. Yes. No network. Why uh, would they, why so they get away with it? I mean, you look, can't, before anybody will be able to raise a finger that that uh, attack had happened, it will have been maybe one hour after. The boys who went, the journalists who went to cover the thing. They couldn't file their stories until they got back to yeah. the state capital. Because also, how do you file the story? Because of network. Yes, it's just like going to Timbuktu Triangle in, in uh, Borno State and say you want to file a story. How? Where is the network? Even talking about network, network is one. What about the topography of the area? The terrain is, you can't navigate it. No, some roads are terrible. They are terrible. There was a time, I think it was in 20... I think 2018 or, or so, I went to do a story in a community the, in, um, in a community attacked by bandits in Casina State along the border with Zamfara. When I got there, you know, a journey that naturally should take 18 minutes took two hours. Mm -hmm. Two hours. So I now said, oh. topography. Mm. terrible road, terrible road, and no network. Mm. And people live, the village is densely populated. Mm. Mm. This one is a, a, a river that separates that community and Zamfara State. That's a natural boundary. They came, packed women and children, 
back them away. So while we were there, I couldn't use my phone. It just seemed like, like when I go to the Northeast, for example, once I travel like 50 kilometers outside of my Dugui, I can't use my phone. Hmm. <laughs> no, no network. Yes. You can't use my phone until I return to the hotel. So that was what happened. Hmm. And those people said, look, for two hours, these guys were attacking us. Hmm. No intervention. No intervention. How do you, who is going to, how do you call, for example? And if you want to uh, take a vehicle to go and lodge a report, you are not sure. You are going to, it will take you two hours. So by that time, the beds had flown. This is a lot of, you know, those boys don't go to urban centers. They don't. They target the vulnerable communities where they know they, they, they are not have, likely they, they are not likely to see a fight back they also have intel they also have intelligence too yes and that community that i i, I, I visited uh, is located in kankara local government mm. not long after that they came to park students of uh, the government uh, science secondary school girls. in kankara there in Kasina, took those boys away okay. now one was organized by Boko Haram, Shekau faction, working with some bandit leaders, people like Dawdawa. That one claimed he lied to the government that he had given up banditry. They gave him a holy Quran to swear with. He swore by it. He said, no, I'm not doing banditry again. No, nothing. When uh, Onga began Wairam <laughs> in his post-banditry life, he went back into the bush. One of the rival bandits now took his life. Hmm. That's why you, this makes no sense trying to negotiate with them because they will still go back to it. Every time that they try to negotiate with them, they still go back to bandits. So I don't really know what Sheikh Gumi wants. If you are saying negotiate with bandits, the ah. history of negotiation with bandits shows clearly we, that we, we they can't be trusted. We, In Zamfara, they negotiated with them. They achieved nothing at the end of the day. Those boys went back. In Casina, they negotiated twice. Twice. There's a famous picture of the former governor of Zamfara, um, uh, right on over Aminu Belo Masari, standing beside the biggest bandit of his era. They call him Buarindaji. Hmm. Standing beside him with Buaridaji holding his AK-47, the governor was standing. He risked his life to go and negotiate. At the end of the day, Buaridaji went back <coughs> to a banditry. So what is the point? Except we exterminate these people, and I've been saying it. That is the only language that they understand. That's it. No half measures. Declare a war. Let's know that we're at war. Let's stop deceiving ourselves. So taking this home, therefore, uh, Dinabo, the governors have met with the service chiefs and the NSA. So the roadmap is clear. Mm. Follow it. That's what, I what, just, what to do. They should just do the right thing. They should make sure that they provide security. That is their first assignment in their states. Provide security for your citizens and their property. All this um, glamour, glamour does not the children are there where they are. Mm. Little children, primary school pupils. Yes. Who is taking uh, care of them? Are How are they surviving? Of them, are they many well, of them are under 10 years. How are, are they, they surviving? Well fed? Are they well fed? How are they eating? How are they, what would they, are they having? Are, are they having their bath? Huh? If they you know the way they do, they will be, you know, they will be moving them from place to place. They know that they are being watched because the reconnaissance aircraft mm. will have located where they are now. So, because of that, they are constantly moving them. That was the way they were moving those train passengers, mm -hmm. constantly moving them, constantly moving them. It's, it's something that you do not want to wish for your enemy, to I be know. in the den of these good-for-nothing people. Uh, you don't uh, want to uh, wish it for your enemy. Dangerous animals. Yes. In, in, in Snakes, uh, scorpions, and all that. They yeah. don't want to know. And at this time, you keep people in the open at the mercy of the elements. Even when it was raining, they were left in the open. Mm. Oh dear. God. His heart is the most re is the, the reason we have to defeat these guys. The government has to make sure that we defeat these guys. Enough of, the, of this nonsense. Come on. 
Okay, uh, um, on a final note, uh, gentlemen, one of us is uh, marking her birthday, so it's not out of place to wish Bimbo Oloide, she's 70. Wow. I, I hear you don't ask a lady how old <laughs> she is, but she's 70. Uh, Bimbo is a TV personality, mm. news anchor of note. He's a legend. Bimba, we wish you well. And yeah. uh, we are counting with you. Yes. Since, a happy birthday. Since we were young, we've been watching her. Mm. Good looking. Exactly. Perfect delivery. Yes. I know that. And uh, it's a good thing to know that um, she has not given up uh, um, anchoring. Oh, because yeah. I saw her uh, not long ago. Yes, so, is it? She's still very reading, active. Yes, reading uh, yeah. the news, you know. So she she has to keep busy. Yes, and of course in the in the U.S. we have even people older than her. Yeah, they are still very active. Yeah. You know, mm. people like Wolf, Blizzard, mm. the rest of them. They are still mm. even um, um, this man, the popular talk show. Uh, Larry King. Larry King. He, he before he died. Seven. Yes, before he died, he, he was, was very seven. active. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. He was so married to his job that he had so many divorces. Oh, yeah. They say six mm. times. Well, women need attention, and uh, once you can't give them attention, they will... <laughs> you, you can't eat your cake and have so, it. <laughs> he was married <laughs> to the what, job. What, what do the men need? <laughs> All right. We, we are ending the show here, but not before reminding you, if you missed any part of it, join us later on tonight at 11 for a repeat broadcast. Of course, on Sunday, we expand the field for you from 1.30 to 3.30. Uh, Journalist Hangout is also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. So on behalf of uh, uh, BKO, I greet you. Thanks.